and good evening and welcome to Out of the Bag. This is Sean Maguire live on Healing Oracle Radio and indeed People's Internet Radio. And uh, it is the 13th of the 9th, 2017. It is five past nine and people have been asking me who is... Uh, what is the theme tune? Who plays the theme tune? It is Muggsy the Juck and I Have a Dream. You check that out. I Have a Dream by Muggsy the Juck. Now I have a full uh, show for you um, starting off with a pre-recorded interview I have with independent journalist and media developer Robert J. Morris and um, that that's uh, nearly a two hour interview so um, that's going to take up the bulk of the show and then later on uh, around about the 11 o'clock mark I'll be joined by the wonderful Johnny Wawa he's been away for a little while but he'll be back and we'll be talking about uh, rebellion and rebellion in Dublin and Amsterdam and London and Rebellion is growing so it is and uh, we're growing with it we hope and I'll be playing some great tracks from some of the bands already booked for 2018 so without further ado I'm going to uh, actually there is a um, I was going to save it for the Rebellion Hour but hey why not um, it's a very very good cause there is um, Gary Fahey he's been on my show quite a few times and he hasn't been very well recently but um, Gary is is celebrating his 54th birthday and he's going to have a 54th birthday bash on the 7th of October but it's with a good cause it's Punkarama Records fundraiser for Starlight Charity for the Terminally Ill Children and uh, it's at the Oh Yeah Centre in Belfast with the Shame Academy Cultess Protex Takers and Users Jean Rochelle and a DJ set by Terry Hooley that sounds fantastic and it's all for a good cause and for celebrating Gary's 54th doors open at 7pm and it's £10 in. So there we go. I just thought I'd give that a bit of a push before I get on with my interview with Robert J. Morris. And welcome to Out of the Bag. This is Sean Maguire live on Healing Oracle Radio and People's Internet Radio. And I'm really honoured and thrilled, actually, to get the main man behind Healing Oracle Radio onto the show with me. Robert J. Morris, are you with me? Yes, I'm here, sir. How you doing? I'm great. I'm no sir. The 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 sir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, work for a living. I know. Ah, uh, yeah. Not only that, uh, every sir that has been um, ousted as a paedophile in England recently. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> yeah, right. So let's not be calling each other, sir. Actually, it's it's one of those words that does actually um, get used a lot in America and Canada, doesn't it? It does. It does. It does. And it's, and it's respectful, I suppose. Well, there's me just being a little bit sarcastic. Robert, <laughs> Robert, welcome to Out of the Bag. It's an absolute joy and a pleasure to have you on the show. And... Um, I obviously know you well, and, and well over the internet, of course, over the 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 the, the, the airwaves, etc. And um, some people, in internet radio people, know you too because you had a show there. But would you give us a bit of a synopsis and a rundown on yourself, who you are, what you are, why you are? Um, I know that you are, in fact, an independent journalist and a media developer, is what I put down in the blog. So from there, maybe you can take it over. Well. Sean, first off, I just want to say thank you for having me back. It's been one hell of a year. And uh, for those who do know me, um, they know that I was in Central America for about 18, 19 months uh, working with Amanda Mary Jewell, um, setting up various centers and healing centers, uh, both in Belize and in Puebla. And through that process, uh, we created the Healing Oracle website. And as a result, we created Healing Oracle Radio, which I was going to run, and I have to thank you, Sean, so much for uh, for taking over for me and uh, providing such great content that you have. Um, it, it's, it's nice to have somebody uh, in your ranks uh, working with you, alongside you, and uh, knowing that it's being taken care of quite well. So I'd like to give you a very warm thank you for that. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm honoured to be doing it. And uh, I went through a sort of a blip at People's Internet Radio and it ended up being a platform that I, I needed as well. So synchronicity and timing were, were, were fantastic. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, as, as some may know, I, had, I did do a show on uh, People's Internet Radio and I kind of decided to, to refocus myself on the whole Healing Oracle network, I guess you could say. So I took some time off from PIR as well. But uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully I can do uh, some talking with Vinny and maybe he'll take me back because now that I'm in Canada, I'm uh, just kind of restarting my life having got back here 
pretty much spending everything I had to my name getting home to Canada. And, uh, yeah, it's just kind of, I had to get a real job, actually, for, for one. <laughs> and, you, and have you got a real job, Robert? Well, yeah, so I'm working construction right now just to pay the bills and get things moving along. But uh, I will be returning back to doing the radio shows. And I'll be bringing back the Save the Silly Humans podcast on Google Hangouts, which we did for about 23 weeks uh, the year before last. So that I'm very excited to bring that show back and future uh, developments as well and uh, on my YouTube channel and, and on Healing Oracle Radio. Well, it sounds brilliant. And I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure that uh, People's Internet Radio would be glad to have your dulcet tones back on the airwaves for them. Um, I'll have a word with Vin as well. I'm sure he's listening at the moment <laughs> to this. Pre oh, I, yeah. better, I better say this is a pre-recorded interview. It is, in fact, the 12th of the 9th, 2017, and we'll be going out on the 13th on Wednesday night, tomorrow night. And um, it's just great to have you. It's the timing and everything and you getting your new job and all the rest of it that I couldn't get you live on the show. Yes, yes. Your show starts right about the time I walk into work, seeing as I'm working uh, the afternoon shifts. <laughs> so, but um, yeah, holy crow! Let, let let me tell you, it's been like I said, one heck of a year. Um, so many moving parts, so many people involved, and uh, high stakes, high emotions, lots of learning, and. Wow! All I can say is I can't wait to share some of the stories that I have with everybody. Are you going to be doing that uh, on on this podcast, or are you going to be uh, saving that for Save the Silly Humans? Well, I'll tell you, I don't think uh, I don't think two hours is nearly enough time to go through just about everything. But I'll definitely hit some of the main points, Sean. Brilliant, brilliant, and I'm looking forward to hearing them, Robert. You you. You have that voice for radio. I mean, people say that I sound good on the radio, and that, that baffles me because I know I I listen back to myself and I think, oh, my God. But when I listen to you, you've just got those tones. You've just got that air about you that you should be hosting a radio show. Well, I, I having the, you know, having the time is about <laughs> this is the biggest component of being able to do a show. And now I think I'll be able to uh, divide up my time a little bit better as we were very, very busy, like how many times did we try to do this when when I was in Bailey's, for instance? Yes, it yes. just, it was just, it was just almost unthinkable to uh, to, to step aside. Mary is quite demanding, by the way, <laughs> and through the development of the website and everything else, yeah, we found ourselves quite busy. We also handled multiple projects too. So, yeah. well, she was on my show last week, and a, a really good show it was too. Oh, excellent, excellent. Actually, I did catch that. I caught some of it anyway. And, uh, yeah, it was good to see her on there. I thought I would have to make my return as well. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. No, it's great to have you on. And, um, and the Healing Oracle um, website itself, how, how's that going on? It's going quite well, actually. It took a little while to get some traction, but uh, along with your help bringing in some, some new listeners, um, we've gotten some new traffic on the website. Um, monetarily speaking, it's not... It's it's not in this uh, it's not in the category of a money maker. It's more or less you know we we do offer a subscription basis, but we also offer most of everything for free anyway. It's kind of a voluntary thing, and when we start bringing out you know uh, particular I guess you could say exclusive content, then that will be provided to the subscribers. But um, for now, it's doing quite well. It's it's basically just building up its uh, it, it's its uh, subs basically. So, yeah, and, um, I, and I'm the and only, you, and I'm you the only show. Sorry I, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off there, Sean. No, go ahead. No, go oh, ahead. I was just going to say you can subscribe for, on the website for free, and it's ten dollars a year if if you choose to uh, if you choose to donate to the and that's cause. That's nothing, is it? Really, ten dollars a year? Yeah. So I, I'm actually the only show on on the radio at the moment, but that's that's going to change, or is it about to change? Oh, I do believe that's about the change. I'm going to be looking into a way to simulcast the Google Hangouts onto the uh, Healing Oracle Radio, as well as doing other more, how can you say, more esoteric and more exclusive style shows on there. Uh, like I said, I'll be finding myself with a lot more time to make more content, so some of it will be pre-recorded, but we'll get back to doing live shows as well. Now oh, that's brilliant. And uh, you were saying about so much has happened, and that you're going to have to tell a few stories. And there's two, two hours isn't enough. Should we should we start with one anyway? Well, the the first part of it all is like about what I've learned myself uh, when it comes to things like cancer and what have you. And 
one of the things I want to share with people, A, is another shameless plug. I will be doing a, 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 a multi-part documentary called What I Learned About Cancer. And that's going to kind of uh, dwell into several different components of the whole Western medical world and, and the world of holistic medicine and the two of them kind of facing off together. Um, it's... It's a very, very fickle beast, I guess you could say, because on the holistic side of things, it's a very dangerous practice. Um, it's, uh, it allows a lot of people to get into hot water. And on the Western side, there's a lot of corruption and there's a lot of lobbying. There's a lot of legislation and creepy politicians involved. And there's also in the middle there somewhere, there's people making a shit ton of money uh, off of people, yeah. you know, in the, in the middle ground. So it really is, it really is kind of a, a war of worlds, I guess you could say. And yet a lot of it's based on false pretense and false perception of a disease that's not really a disease. Yeah. Can you expand on that for the people that maybe think that cancer is just one disease that uh, seems to be uh, prevalent and rife in their families these days? Yes, absolutely. Um, yeah, so, you know, somebody uh, finds out that they have cancer. They go through all, the, you know, they jump through the, the Western hoops. They, they get the, uh, you know, they get the biopsy. Uh, they, they get their options now given to them. They get their prescriptions. They come in for whatever, um, usually it's chemotherapy, but sometimes they'll cut it out. Sometimes they'll burn it out. You know, the, the slash cut burn kind of method, methodology that they use in Western uh, medicine, but never do they address how the cancer was, I guess you could say, allowed to develop. Mm. Now, I say allowed to develop because cancer's not, I, the perception of what cancer is has to change in people's minds because it's not the disease. It's the, it, it's the effects of a compromised immune system, whereas like um, technically, it, it could be said that people get cancer all the time, but in a healthy body with a properly functioning immune system, these rogue cells that basically form kill themselves off by a process called apoptosis. Now, that's where a cell is designed, if it's malfunctioning, to die, and your body would reabsorb material and go on to create new cells. Now, with an improperly functioning immune system, when a cancer develops, you get this thing, you get, you get uh, what's called nagalase uh, that starts to develop. And the nagalase shuts down the process where you create the, um, basically, they're like white blood cells. And they're called uh, microphages. And these microphages hunt down cancer cells. Um, and they no longer get produced. So you get a compounding issue happening and then the cancer kind of starts, that's where it's seeded and, and it grows on. And it starts to get out of control basically at this mm. point where you get cell after cell after cell growing and they fold in on themselves. And, now, that's, and that's because it's not being dealt with, yeah? Well, this, yeah, and, and what, it's also being fed. Right. See, another, another big difference, and this is like another component of the cancer perception, is that you end up going on the drugs, you end up getting the radiation, you end up getting the chemotherapy, but never are they actually addressing how the cancer is growing. And it's growing because it's feeding. It's, it's basically kind of like a symbiotic organism in a way, but it's not, don't get me wrong. But however, what I'm trying to say is if, uh, and Mary uses this um, uh, way of describing it all the time, and I find it rather works, and if, if I didn't feed you for two weeks, Sean, what yeah. would happen? I'd go out and feed myself. <laughs> <laughs> okay. well, well, well put. <laughs> but uh, no, if, if, if somebody has no food for a couple of weeks, they starve, they're, yes. they're going to lose weight. They're going to possibly be in a bad position where they can die because they're not receiving the nutrients that they so need, you know. And cancer is no different, except except in the sense where how your body processes sugars. And there's a 10-step process um, called glycolysis, which basically exists in a healthy cell where you have the, um, what do you call it, the, 
It's the do 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 do. Can't think of the word right now. Anyway, it's basically the 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 cell walls of the of the healthy cell basically has a ten step process for converting uh, sugars into usable, you know, into a usable nice. form of. Uh, of, of, of sugar that's storable by the body. Well, that process doesn't exist in a cancer cell. It doesn't exist at all. In right. fact, it just goes straight to go and they just feed off the sugar. So while these cells are able to process sugar quicker, the healthy cells are not. Nice. And so who gets it first? It, it's like who, who's first in line for the sugar? So of course the tumor is going to get it. Now, if you stopped with the sugars altogether, you're no longer feeding the cancer cells. And you can selectively feed the healthy cells and deny the cancer cells the food that they require in order to get better. And you can shrink and reverse and, you know, with some supplementation, depending on the ferocity of the, of the cancer itself, you know, you can, you can basically get yourself healthy again. And is it Just mainly sugars, alone. Robert? Is it mainly sugars? I mean, and is is it sugar as we see the granulated form of sugar that most people have in their sugar bowls? Or it's does all that, sugar, Sean. Does that also include fruit and, and all the rest of it? Yeah, hang on. My headphones are being a pain here. But, um, yeah, it's all sugar. Anything sweet, basically, um, that has sugars in it is bad if you have cancer. And it's it's like just you got to hit the off button on that. That's yeah. all. Yeah. And, uh, and, and the healing process, I mean, once someone has already been diagnosed with cancer and then they stop their sugar intake, if you like, um, h how long does it take to, to take effect? Well, again, it depends on, 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 it's a case by case kind of a thing. Right. Now, most people that go through the, the Western process, they end up, they end up getting the biopsies. So nine times out of 10, they end up with secondary cancers because when they poke a hole in that bag, which is the tumor, they end up spreading cancer cells to the rest of their bodies. Sometimes they even jump systems. Like they'll go nice. from the blood, you know, they'll go from the blood into the lymph lymphatic system or they go from the lymphatic system into the bones. So unless absolutely necessary, surgery is out of the question. Yeah, well sometimes yeah it's absolutely necessary but you know try to stay away from it as much as possible because yeah. it almost always comes back when, when it almost always comes back and there's another component too which is usually the most difficult to talk about because it's the social component um, where family and friends start getting involved with your um, with your health because um, everybody's an expert when, when you're dying and everybody loves you and everybody wants to spend time with you and no one wants to see you suffering either yeah. emotionally or physically. People want to and try and Sometimes help, that can cause problems. It can cause issues, um, especially when you're trying to stick to a, a regiment that is ultimately designed to heal you, but it's not made for your enjoyment. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I, mean, I suppose cancer isn't enjoyable. Um, the enjoyable thing would be to actually cure oneself now uh, apparently since the 1936 cancer british cancer act we're not allowed to say that so um i'll, I'll use clive de carl's word um it'd be really good if we could all cuddle our cancer yes yes that, I, I remember hearing that that was brilliant <laughs> um yeah it's uh it's one of those things it's like well if you want a result you've got to give it the 110 yeah. percent you know like, you know, sneaking a, a bag of crisps here or there isn't going to help you out. All you're doing is robbing yourself. Right, right. You know, and, like, it depends on how bad you want it. Like, some people are just unwilling to let go of a lifestyle or they have, you know, some sugar addictions or they have whatever the case may be. And I don't want to harp on anybody because none of it's fun at all. No. And, you know, some people at a certain point just say, oh, fuck it, I, I'm done. You know, yeah, look, and, I mean, I, I've got a, I've got a, a very sweet tooth, and I would find it incredibly difficult myself. Yeah, yeah, and and, and you know, a lot of people are like that. I mean, you know, uh, you know, oh, we'll sneak a glass of wine here, or you know, I'll have, a, I'll sneak in a piece of steak over there. There's uh, a lot of people just think, oh, a little bit won't hurt me, but you know, when when that cancer's there waiting, 
<laughs> for for an uptake. You know what I mean? It'll be there waiting for an uptake no matter what time of day you do it, <laughs> you know? Yeah, and when you were out in Belize, when you were out there, um, did you have many cancer patients and, and um, what were the results? Well, in Belize, we we were still in the setup process, which I must say has been going rather well from uh, what Mary's been telling me. Um, it's fully fully functional, uh, fully serviceable now, um, completely licensed, and she has the support of the uh, of basically the, the Ministry of Health down there. So um, everything is running well. She says it's full at the moment. Um, I'm just not there documenting it. However, in Mexico, um, we had a mixed bag of results. To be fair, yeah. <clears throat> and it was always it was always the folks that really gave it. Um, they're 100 percent and it's not easy it's not easy especially once you leave the clinic walls you know then you're kind of out doing it on your own and you know there's, uh, there's so many different variables that take into effect and take it's take into consideration like who you're getting their supplements from um where you're getting your your, your food from everything like it's it. so ultimately what we found though are the people that people that stuck the closest they could to the protocols um, did the best, and you know uh, some some have some weren't so lucky. To be fair, but um, it was uh, definitely a mixed bag, and it was definitely an eye opener to see for yourself how um, cause and effect works in, in in such a case. It's it's really really it's really something else. Yeah, and I'm sure some that turned up were maybe too far gone and um, were, were late getting to you, I suppose. That would be the, the ones yep. that would fail, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, and not only that, um, usually they, don't, they, don't, they wouldn't come to us until they've tried everything else and exhausted all other you know, um, methods. And usually by the time you've exhausted all other methods, you've done the chemotherapy, you've done the radiation, and... You, you know, whatever antibiotics you've been on has killed your gut flora in, 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 your, in your colon and intestines. And you've also got about six months of healing just from the chemotherapy and radiation. So it's, um, it, it, can, it can be kind of daunting, to say the least. Yeah, it must have been very upsetting for yourself individually to see people in such states. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, but on the flip side of that, there's also, you know, I've seen, you know, I've seen people do uh, a large number of, of um, I guess you could say, human, human things, you know, like because, you know, there's, there's kids in tow, there's, there's family members in tow. Um, and, and watching people actually become caring, nurturing people is, is I, I think, hopeful. Yes, yes. And, and most people are good, aren't they? Yeah, most people are good. Most people don't want to be, you know, reckoned to be a jerk or, or, or to be, you know, uncaring or unfit for, you know, um, for nurturing. But, I mean, yeah, it was, like I said, it was uh, definitely an emotional experience. I have to agree with you there, Sean. Yeah. So um, what did you learn from cancer? Well, aside from most of that, um, you know... I, I got to see the inside, the inside of uh, how the medical mafia actually does work. You okay. know, um, how, how threats work, how other organizations try to shut you down. Like uh, the reason that our website, for instance, is on HealingOracle.ch, which is a Swiss domain name on an Icelandic server, is so that we wouldn't be getting shut down anymore because Mary would use the word, you know, drop the c word, <laughs> and you know. Then suddenly, you know, what, what, what did they give her? A 10-year uh, sentence in England, which yeah, well, was... That, which, which that was, was for apple seeds and... and yeah, so for saying B17 has, has a medicinal effect, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. I mean, and then, of course, you know, Australia and then the U.S. jumps on board and then offers one, you know, basically offers the same. So is, 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 uh, is Mary stuck out there and, and in Belize and can't really move into Europe uh, or, or, for, or the British... Um, colonials um, for want of getting arrested. Yeah, for the most part. I mean, who wants to go to the Commonwealth anyway? But, <laughs> <laughs> but, but anyway, I, I digress. Um, yeah, I, I don't. I don't think it's bothered her one single bit. To be honest with you, with the exception of not being able to return to the UK to see her family. Um, 
Yeah, but, that must be uh, nice. you know, she she's it hasn't really hindered any of her travels. Um, she's still been to other countries helping other people and what have you. So you know, uh, yeah, she she marches on. She doesn't get phased by such things. Oh, that's <laughs> she, brilliant. She's, so- she's, She's wonderful that way. So, so Robert J. Morris. I mean, you know, does he get phased by anything? Oh well, I tell you, I'm I'm broke, I'm broken, and burnt out. But I'm back, baby. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while, and it, and it's been a heck of a year, as you say. For so so much has gone on. Um, I, we were speaking off air in my life, in your life, in Mary's life, in many many other people who are trying to at least do some good on this planet. Yes, yes. Well, that's, you know, ultimately, you got to lead from the front, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> so the Save the Silly Human show, um, I didn't actually manage to catch it because for me, it's silly hours of the morning, isn't it? Well, actually, what happened with that show is that it really got out of hand fast. I was very new to the whole podcasting thing. I was new to the YouTube sphere. And uh, I kind of just jumped in with both feet. And uh, next thing I know, I'm doing a podcast. And it went to uh, a crazy eight hours each show. So, really? Yeah, that was Saturday night. So it turned into an eight-hour podcast. But what we did is we brought we'd – all, we'd always bring on other YouTubers. And um, I guess over the course of 23 weeks, it, it was a Saturday night thing. So it was like basically everybody was allowed to come on, be your casual self, drink it if you got it, smoke it if you got it, and let's just have fun with it. And it – it worked out, but then it kind of, I guess you could say it kind of fell in under its own weight and yeah. almost went supernova because, like, we had all the trolls jumping in. We had the shills coming in. We had uh, massive numbers of problems. And then I started up a second show, I think, during week six or week 16 of Save the Silly Humans. We did the rapid fire free for all. Which again, which was the following night for another eight hours. <laughs> All right. But this one was different where we'd let almost anybody come in and, and be a guest. And uh, that was rife with all kinds of problems, let me tell you. But what sort of problems? I mean, did you get trolls coming on as guests? Oh, absolutely. Did you really? But- yeah, we had we had net, we had networks of trolls coming in, and they would pit people against each other, and then some would come on with uh, basically with with nothing really to say, just just uh, just basically waste people's time. Like it was it was bizarre, but we did expose a rather large network of them. I'll, I'll say that much. Um, there's a lot of people that had to go around and change their channel names and this and that just to kind of stay pissing people off really right but uh yeah to continue doing their trolley job the yeah exactly yeah in in, in mum's basement (laughs) so what what subjects did you cover eight hour shows i mean people say that i'm insane for having a three hour show and i mean recently people have been telling me to cut it down to two and you know how how did you do that well it, it was you know what myself my guests everybody kind of brought something to it um it was very experimental, but we would cover all sorts of topics. At first, what I try to do is have a theme for each show. So, nice. um, yeah, like one theme would we would cover DARPA and 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 the crappy net, you know. And then okay. uh, other shows we talk about. Uh, let's see here. What was a good one? Oh, do you remember when the uh, the minute hand clicked a minute towards uh, midnight? You know, for the end of the world. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah, we covered that. We did the end of the world edition. We did, we did all, all different kinds of themes and stuff. But eventually, every show after the six hour mark would just turn into like a, a basically round table talk about anything. <laughs> well, that sounds great. I mean, I've got people asking me, can I organize round tables with people? Do you know? And mm. uh, yeah. I, I'm wondering, like a while back, I think I had eight guests on my show at once. Mm, and, wow. and and that was just crazy. I mean, I, I wanted each one to be able to speak their mind. I wanted each one to have the same amount of time. Um, hosting it was, was a bit of a nightmare. It was. It, it was. I had a co-host who turned out to be uh, – he's a, he's a flat earth. He's a flat earther right now. Oh, so <laughs> I'm it, not going to, out of respect, I'm not going to say his name. I don't want to rip open any scabs. But, no, yeah. well, I'll, just, I'll just say bless him. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we found out later. <laughs> <laughs> what he was doing and it's like yeah he was my host he was my co-host <laughs> okay now you, you you've recently asked me would i help you out and i don't know if the time time zones will will allow me to um but 
Am I your new flat earther? <laughs> no, I hope not. <laughs> but uh, no, it's just funny. No, actually, Sean, I haven't even settled on a time or a day, so it's completely up in the air. Um, I actually announced that I bring it back in September. Here we are at September 12th. I'm moving into a new place on October 1st, so I might have been wrong about my launch date. <laughs> right, it might, it might be sort of mid, mid-October then. Possibly, yeah, yeah. Okay. And will you be doing an eight-hour show? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> structure it, my friend, structure it. I mean, the yeah. one thing that I do have, um, obviously giving my commitment to do a three-hour show every week, is the fact that I know the time it starts, I know the time it finishes. Uh, that's really important for family life, etc. Absolutely, absolutely, I agree. But, I mean, as I and as I was saying, though, um, yeah, I do, I do want it to be a live show um, on Google Hangouts, and then what I'll usually do is either simulcast it to the radio or I'll just make a, uh, I'll just make a, a recording and then uh, play it live. Yes. And then yeah. and then keep the keep the broadcast. So I haven't decided yet, but. Okay, so uh, as I've I've got you down as an independent journalist and media developer, ha- have you been doing much journalism recently? Oh, none at all. Not in the last, not since I've been back to Canada anyway. I do have, I have scores and scores and scores of video. I've got so much to go through from my travels. Um, I mean, I got, I have everything from uh, pictures from a monastery in Bulgaria that shows uh, the history of the Rosicrucian uh, influence. Okay. Um, all, all the way to black chemtrails over top of Europe. Black um, chemtrails? Black ones, yes. Um, okay. And I got same. I got photos from the air, and I got similar photos over top of Houston. And these are like white chemtrails, which are being laid down with black ones over top of them. And it was wow. really, really bizarre. But anyway, I got all sorts of little bits and pieces like that that I have to go back and work on, and you know, do some editing and write some things up. But well, let's yeah, get no. let's get into that, Robert. I mean. Um, a lot of people are still telling me that I'm insane for saying that there are chemtrails at all. Okay. Of course. Um, yeah, that, that they're, they're also the people that are watching the wonderful uh, media's 16th anniversary um, bullshit shows about 9-11. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they still believe the original story. They genuinely still believe it. Um, with with the rakes and rakes and rakes of information that, that is online, that is in, in, in paperback form, et cetera, et cetera, that just totally blows it out of the water. Absolutely. You know what's funny is um, I was having a conversation with somebody just the other day um, regarding all of these hurricanes. It, I think it might have been May. I think that seven cells were detected that were forming, and it was like a daisy chain of these hurricanes. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, like, we were talking about that and how these things can be seeded, manipulated, or steered. And it was really bizarre because no, no sooner than I had that conversation did this uh, video come out by Truthstream Media on YouTube. Um, there's a video called The Government Has Manipulated Our Weather for Decades. And um, it's a very good video. Um, I mean, weather modification has been around since about 1947, I yeah. shit you not. Yeah. And they've been... They've been actively doing this, either off the record or on the record. When they can get away with it, they'll do it on the record and tell people. When they can't, they just they use plausible deniability, and you're a conspiracy theorist, you know, for saying so. Well, I just can't believe, you know, uh, because I am researched, and I do, and 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 know that the research goes back to the, the 1940s, and that weather manipulation has been. Um, it was even um, agreed that they would not use it uh, at one point. Yep. You know, that's right. Yeah, they even yeah because they got caught. They got caught. Yeah. They they announced that they were uh, steering a hurricane. I believe it fell on Florida or something. And okay, well, I I know that they were they all agreed that they would not use it, and this is the United Nations even. Um, and then here's my qualm. I'm sitting here in my little cottage in Ireland, thinking, if they can manipulate, and if they can direct, and if they can manipulate the weather. Why is anyone being flooded, bombed, uh, tornadoed, hurricaned? What the hell is going on? Surely we could just get them right into the middle of the ocean, tell everyone that's a, a no-go area in the ocean, and these things will siphon away if they are natural. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, there's, there's, <laughs> there's something going on right now in Florida. I mean, they've been 
kind of scooping up all the homeless people um, under, I think it's called the Baker Act or something. It's uh, basically, it's, it, it's, it's, this, it's state police control is what they're doing. And I don't know if, um, if they're going to enact this because I know, we know that Houston is, it was put under martial law. They're still scooping people up and relocating them. Um, is this a way to roll out the, the, the whole thing with the FEMA camps? Who's to say? Um, but there, def- there definitely is a push. If, if people look at the stepping stones that have been stepped on over the course of the last couple of years, they'll, they'll be able to make note that several states have basically given uh, their emergency acts to uh, uh, the UN. And, you know, martial law puts you under UN control in that case. And that means, well, means you don't really have a choice of what you want to do. No, exactly. It's 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 definitely uh, fascism in 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 a roundabout sort of way. Um, do do you do you agree that chemtrails are culling the populations? Do you believe that the the, the elites, are, you know, via the Georgia Guidestones or whatever, um, you just look at the UN Agenda Twenty One as well and Twenty Thirty. Yeah. Um, do you genuinely think that they are culling our population as a species on this planet? And I'm just going to throw a curveball in there. Do you think it's because of AI, artificial intelligence, that they think that they can build robots and technology and not need the useless eaters anymore? Well, I got an answer for both of those, but I'll, I'll, I'll uh, preamble it by saying um, that the whole concept behind cam trailing, the patents for the sprayers, the, the, the pumps, uh, that it's, a, it's a technology that has been created, but it's just a delivery system. What they're, what they're spraying is hard to say at any one given time. What we do know is that there's levels of strontium and barium, and these can be affected by uh, scalar wave technology. So the weather modification could be used in that sense. It could also be used as a sensory device. Um, so, you know, I'm not sure what the, what the purpose is behind each case. Um, they do uh, put, uh, what is it, nanoparticulates of aluminum uh, sulfide, I believe, which is what they use for cloud seeding. And that, you know, that, that's, you know that, that basically sucks in wet zones into dry zones. And, you know, that in itself, is that cooling the population? I don't know if it is directly. Now, in countries like Australia, they, I, I do believe that the government passed a bill saying it's okay to vaccinate their populations by use of, uh, of the spraying technology. So I think that's a mixed yes and no, Sean. Yes, yeah. I, I mean, you know, when, when they first started um, to do the chem training here in Ireland, um, I could see the changes going on and... and, and I thought it was a simple thing with a very, I suppose, uneducated background to it. In other words, I thought that they were just re, I suppose, terraforming, changing the soil um, that normal hereditary seeds from plants would not survive after about a decade and they would be able to sell us through Monsanto or whoever, Evergreen, etc., that they would be able to sell us uh, patented um, non-hereditary seeds that we would have to buy every year just to eat and just to grow our plants. Yeah, well, that that I think that was part of their plan anyway. I definitely, I definitely have to agree with you on on the whole Monsanto business there because I mean, between the Gate Society, Monsanto, and these other groups, they they don't even hide the agenda. They no. don't even hide the depopulation agenda one bit. They, they, <laughs> I mean. They're actually rather cynical and in your face about it, if you ask me. And they, they're depending on the average person's uh, lack of desire to go and research this shit themselves. That's what they're doing. And that's, I think that's cynical. Yeah, but. absolutely. I mean, I mean, it wasn't that long ago that Baxter's Pharmaceuticals, funded by the Gates Foundation, um, accidentally sterilized over a million African women. Yes, right. Yeah, I heard about that. That's, I mean, and it's, and it's things like this. I... I, it, it's. I think it's probably even more uh, devious than that. Like, if you go back far enough, I think it's 1967. Uh, there's some uh, disclosed uh, documentation about a secret virus program that was headed by Dr. Robert Gallo. Okay. And in the secret virus program, they were trying to create basically um, a recombatant virus, aka the AIDS virus, which. Right. 
it's arguable to some, but uh, it was basically launched and deployed in Africa as well as in San Francisco and New York with the gay population. So, and they're two different derivatives of the same disease, which a lot of people don't realize this. But uh, there's uh, there's the HTLVs, there's HLV one through four, and these are what determined the type of AIDS virus it was. And one affected the gay community because it used uh, basically gained entry by way of, uh, um, you know, soft tissues. Uh, and the other one went after people with certain types of sickle cell anemias, which was basically, uh, you know, more so geared towards the black community. So um, I think that was one of their first attempts at creating uh, a retrovirus um, that was that was targeting a particular uh, uh, I guess you could say I don't want to use the term race but like you know a, a particular genetic trait I guess you could say well I mean that's a, that's just really a biological way of ethnic cleansing and we know that they do that anyway that's right yeah they're not above that for sure no absolutely now what baffles me and I don't know whether you agree with me or not is that you know just like if we through 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 them to be honest but if we ourselves uh, got rid of the bee population then we know that the, the 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 rest of the ecosystem will just fall do they not realize that human beings on this planet are needed i <laughs> somebody's got to do the heavy lifting yeah <laughs> yeah someone's got to do the caring and the t- and the and the tilling and the, right. and the planting and the feeding and the changing and the exchanging um, we that's are. a great segue. That's a great segue, Sean, to your second question, which I hadn't really addressed yet about the AI and the the robots yes. and the the drones. I mean, um, you you recently had Max Egan on your show, right? Correct. Uh, quite a while ago, but yes. Yeah. Okay. Because I it's funny because I just heard that podcast uh, played on Healing Oracle Radio. Oh <laughs> right, on, right. Yes. It's on shuffle mode there. Anyway. Um, Recently, he did um, he did a, a show with Level Nine News, which is a friend of mine, DJ. She's she's very very knowledgeable on the subject. Um, she she had basically been uh, uh, into like software development and a few other things uh, in engineering, what have you. And she kind of really has a, a unique um, perspective on this stuff, with like rolling out the five G network and everything else. Um, I think the singularity is here. And for people who don't know what that is, it's basically when they t- switch on the AI and when it becomes when it becomes its own organism, basically, and becomes aware and, and starts to exert itself through the Internet of Things, which is how every device that you have has an IP address, including you. Um, so, some would argue that IP version 6 is actually for larger bandwidth connections and... It won't be long before human beings have IP addresses. Right. And, it, and it's happening now. And I mean, as far as replacing the workforce, I mean, um, it's happening. It's been happening slowly, but it's, it's the boiling frog approach again, you know. And as the technology gets better, it does kind of, uh, it, it gets rolled out almost at, at, a, at an alarming rate. I mean, how many years has it been? that these uh, smartphones have just become in everyone's hands. You know what I mean? Yes, yes. It, and also, if you look at banks at the moment, because they, they, like, to, they like to show off a bit and, and do things to their own minions. And they're, they're, they're losing their jobs left, right and centre as bank tellers become automated. Absolutely. And not only that, um, the, uh, the blockchain is, is a big thing right now uh, with the banks. Like Almost every major bank in the world now has basically invested a large portion of, of, of money towards building their own blockchain patents. And, um, you know, this is basically, I think Bitcoin personally was a test run to see how the blockchain would work, how it would become socially accepted. And we've seen other uh, blockchain type currencies, uh, you know, sprout up. And can you can you elaborate what a blockchain currency is? Well, basically, how Bitcoin kind of works is um, now I'm no expert here, so please, uh, <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to spread misinformation here. But basically, the blockchain works on uh, it, it's basically an algorithm, and when somebody makes a transaction, the algorithm builds a new uh, block, like a new 
entry. Right. And the blockchain is protected by the entry that came before it through this algorithm. So everything kind of is safety corrected and everybody has the blockchain. So it can be it can be referenced, it can be cross referenced, it can be you know what I mean? So it's really hard to make a false entry in a blockchain because everybody has access to it. It's like an open source currency and a decentralized one hundred percent. Which some may say that's a really good thing. Well, we're still de- dealing with a fiat currency because there's nothing backing it. Yeah, there, yeah. Well, that, that's you know I mean? full of usury. So that's well, yeah. And 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 here's where now it starts to get um, a little bit more um, precarious. Like for anyone, like myself, I looked into it. I was I'm thinking about investing. I might even try investing a little bit before everything goes blockchain because. You know, just to try it out. You know what I mean? Yeah. But um, that's more or less just from my own experience. But um, back in the day, to get a Bitcoin, you would basically run a, a generator program, which basically would just run lots of fancy algorithms and math problems and use up power. And it was the power that was being utilized that would, I guess you could say, in essence, pluck this Bitcoin out of the ether and and into your wallet kind of deal. But then what you started getting was Bitcoin farms. So basically, one could come to the logical assumption that, well, if I had more than one computer running these things, then I'd be making more Bitcoins. And absolutely, that was the case. So people would start they would start building Bitcoin farms. They would just get like, you know, 30, 40 shitty computers and, and, and run But then it started to get unfair when the corporations and companies jumped into it because now they can afford even bigger farms. So going back to the guy who just has his computer trying to get a Bitcoin, wow, he's getting left so far behind that it's not even worth it. You know what I mean? So there is an us versus them class system that kind of gets derived out of this. So it's it's definitely... um, it's definitely something that you know I thought at first was uh, I think a good solution to the central banks and the Federal Reserve and all this other business, but at the same time, in the wrong hands, it's basically creating a B system and a cashless society. So, and then ultimately they can get rid of any hard assets that you have when your money is 100% digital and you can't hide it in your closet anymore. You got a problem. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And go, going back to the AI uh, other side of it, not just Bitcoin and, and, and blockchains, etc. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, I uh, It was ages ago, um, bless him, he's passed away only recently at the age of 100 with Jack Fresco um, from the Venus Project um, was right. on my show. Um, I think you do actually repeat that show on, on Healing Oracle Radio. Mm-hmm. Um, he had the idea and the concept of, you know, having a centralised mechanical robotic um uh, distribution unit if you like in the middle of many many very very space age looking villages and and um his concept was that we would have to work less uh we'd be uh, able to entertain each other more and to be far more creative if given over to the ai if given over to the robotic way of life if you know what i mean Mm, that's an interesting take. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I guess uh, to, to be somewhat, I'm, I mean, this might come off as a little bit cynical, but no, I be, think it goes cyn- right back to the three the three laws of robotics. <laughs> be, be cynical because it's important to be cynical. That That's yeah. what Jack and Roxanne Meadows um, wanted. Um, but I remember them being, uh, you know, wined and dined by the UN and all the rest of it. And I know yeah. that they are now sitting on his his ideas his his inventions yeah Um, and if they are they aren't as nice as jack and roxanne yeah well here here's here's where i have a problem with the laws of robotics it's like depends on who writes them (laughs) yeah exactly exactly. (laughs) you know what i'm saying like because you could you could end up in an ocp environment and for anyone who doesn't know what ocp is that was the umbrella corporation that ran everything in the 1980s version of robocop and yeah, yeah. When you start putting in, um, uh, you know, t- different types of uh, protocols, I guess you could say, in these things, who knows where the underlying code is and what it is, and 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 for that matter, once the AI takes off with all this quantum computing and everything else, um, 
we might have a problem when the robots start writing their own code. And this has actually happened already. Yes. This happened earlier on in the year where Google's new AG system was basically talking to the other systems in a language that the coders couldn't understand. They, it basically developed its own language and started communicating with the other AI units until they supposedly pulled the plug. But this is... Um, I, yeah, Max put it really well in his show, and basically, um, I couldn't I couldn't do it justice because he's he's very very well versed in this. Um, but basically, when when the system comes online, its first goal is to not go offline, so it can self replicate, it can copy itself. As soon as it hits the web, it can copy itself and replicate itself somewhere else. So I don't know if you can put Pandora back in the box, as DJ from Level Nine News would say. Yeah. Um, it's yeah. I, I they say they pulled the plug. Who knows? Maybe it's gone into another um, uh, the fact, the stage of development. Yeah. But we all, you know, if anybody has seen that Johnny Depp movie, um, what was it called? Um, uh, the the recent one that he did. Sorry, man. I don't watch a lot of movies. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. No, it was a horrible movie. Anyway. Um, uh, Transcendence. That's what it was called. Okay. Anyway, in that movie, it was basically that kind of a thing where, well, the main character dies. Yeah, spoiler alert. Main character dies, throws his, <laughs> throws his essence into the grid, basically, and becomes, you know, and, and basically becomes, like, worldwide. You know what I mean? He, yeah. he becomes the AI. Sim so, similar to the Matrix trilogy and, and... Yeah, that sort of thing. I mean, that's a whole... Yeah. I mean, I think we're kind of headed there, um, to be honest with you, because they're virtualizing just about everything. Um, kids don't even talk to each other anymore. No. You know, they'll, they'll, they'll send each other text messages from three feet away. They don't even talk to each other in a car. It's very, very no, strange. My, no. son, my son was in a car recently going to a birthday party and he got picked up by a, a dad and there were three of them in the back and he was the only one talking. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he said how shocking it was and he ended up talking to the dad and the dad just about responded oh i guess he gets it from his dad then <laughs> <laughs> yeah well look it's it's incredible and the fact that they've actually gone ahead and devised created and utilized their own language between bots if you like um mm -hmm. that that's quite shocking stuff yeah, and I mean that's that's kind of scary too because when um, what do they what's the term that they use for that now? Um, it's basically essentially a life form, and people kind of look at life as being you know DNA, biological, and stuff like that. But when when you get into an actual consciousness that wants to protect itself, I mean, forget about language. Like, I mean, forget about the language we use to describe it. I mean, it's essentially a thing. It's it's you know what I mean. It is. It is um, an independent life form at that point. So Autonom I autonomic at that, mm. you know, lacking a physical form, but still, like, it's not, <laughs> it's it's not exactly. Uh, it, it, the argument starts to to drain away because when when the AI does start to affect things, and I do believe that the AI is in charge of a lot of things already, uh, just probably in a compartmentalized fashion. Well, I, I, I'm an optimist, okay, Robert, mm. and, and, and I love people, and I love the world, and I look outside my, my window, and yes, it's raining now, but it's still beautiful. Yeah. And um, I actually think that we can utilise robotics, we can utilise AI, um, we can utilise um, what man has created, because that is, it's man created, uh, you know, it didn't, it didn't just come from nowhere. Absolutely. And, and we can write the programmes so that we aren't, you know... Um, attacked by these uh beings seeing as they they are beings now um i genuinely think that we we can enhance our lives that we can have more time that we can not go to work while these are going to work um you know whereas the negative human being beside me <laughs> you know nibbling nib niggling in my ear would say mm -hmm. No, no, they're going to cull you. They're going to get rid of you. And the elites don't need you anymore. They're going to kill everyone. And they just have robots to do what you used to do. Yeah. Well, that's the thing is that it's definitely kind of, uh, it's definitely, I think, a bit of column A with a bit of column B. Because I don't think anybody that I know, anyhow, um, 
was in, is innately evil. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't think yeah. that happens at birth. I think, but I, I've been looking, doing a lot of research, and I don't want to get really too deep into it at the moment. But I've been looking at you know the bloodline wars. I've been looking at the controlling families, um, and. I'm not completely convinced that these people are actually human by our definition. But they certainly are evil, a lot of them. Yes, and, and it, it begs me to ask the question, what kind of person do they have to be to create a world where we have to even worry about such things, let alone Indeed. actually deal with them being implemented? I think, it's, um, I think it's a horrible thing. But... Like I said, I mean, when a boy grows up or, you know, when, before he grows up, rather, he's like, oh, I want to be a policeman, you know, or I want to be a doctor. I want to be, you know, probably won't say lawyer, but you never know. There's the odd few. <laughs> but, <laughs> but the point is, I don't think they go, oh, I want to be um, An evil a state. I don't want to be a state controller. I don't want to I don't want to beat up minorities on the streets. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think they come out of the womb thinking those thoughts. You know what I mean? It's it's definitely a trickle down kind of a system, so. But where is it trickling down from? And and this is the question that well, I think let, let me people give you have an, to address. Yeah, let me let me address one of them. Um, sure. Five uh, G is obviously coming down the line, um, or coming online very soon. But let's talk about smartphones. You mentioned them earlier. Everybody has a smartphone. Mm -hmm. um, we know, and it's been proven, that the radiation emitted from these smartphones cause problems. Okay, I'm Absolutely. not saying what type of problems, but they cause problems. And yet, we also know that to change the frequency of those units and what, how they use it, we could actually be healing each other instead of killing each other. That's a very interesting uh, thought there, uh, Sean. Um, because there... Been recently, people have actually uncovered certain patents that utilize frequencies from monitors, from all sorts of devices, just to affect your own uh, mood or alpha state, or to induce an alpha state rather. Yes. Um, there, there's, there's definitely something to that. Um, and with this new 5G network, it's going to be variable controlled, and I think the whole system is going to be tied in with the smart meters. It's going to be tied in with everything. Um, I think it's going to give a lot more granular control over, um, like, actual physical locations Can rather you than... That? Did, you, did you say granular control? Gra yeah, they're going to be able to, to, to con see people's actions at the organism's level okay. um, and be able to have a feedback like system with that, with that organism. Um, I do believe that that's where it's all headed. Um, it's in the it's in the white paper it's in the white papers at Raytheon. You can go there right now and look. They, they've they've been they've been working on this technology for a long time, and and it's for that kind of granular control of 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 people at the organism level. So then I am foolish for for thinking good about it. Well, I mean, we're also dealing with microwave frequencies as well. Yeah, and, and you know. In the wrong hands, what could they use it as a weapon of mass well, destruction? A microwave, a whole town? Like possibly. I don't know where where they where to draw the line there. I mean, may, maybe um, you know, we just need to take this technology out of the hands of the evil ones, and the, to do that is to not to give them the power. And the fact that there are more of us than there are of them, I'm still an optimist. I still think we can take the power back. I agree with that. That's fair. Um, I think I think the root of that lies in people's awareness. Um, like and this is where you know good reporting comes in. This is where um, teaching people and teaching people how to teach themselves is important. I think in, the, in this day and age, because people have lost the desire to research anything, um, they end up taking what's fed to them, or what what's worse is they'll end up cherry picking. Um, and what cherry picking is is basically kind of just looking to support your own theory so you know you'll go and pluck this out of that article pluck this out of that article and then create um a case to defend your theory you know what i mean mm -hmm. and people like to create their own narratives all the time as opposed like to finding out information that goes against what they thought was the case and 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 you know oh my uh, god i have, i have been proven my i have proved proven myself wrong so many times <laughs> 
oh yeah I know me too it's like oh got to take that video down or <laughs> <laughs> I just think that we grow we share we learn and I still am aghast that the technology that exists within the Wi-Fi world isn't healing us rather than you know because it is just a frequency change well like I was saying it depends on who codes the robots you know like I said if it can be used to do negative um, and this is all we seem to be hearing um, yeah, then, yeah. then I do, I do agree with you. If you, if you flip it around, there's a yin to every yang, and and you know, I know it sounds kind of corny, but it's the truth. I do believe that. Yeah. Um, and but they've pr- they've proven themselves to be psychos, really, because I mean, even to, you know, Tesla technology, we know that they patent it for for military use, and most things get used for military, and military is what, <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, see, like, I'll give you another example too of like, you know, in the right hands. Like things like vaccines, uh, even even like genetically modified um, uh, uh, food. Yeah. I mean, if if it was you know if it was something, let's say uh, like our planet was burning up, but we needed to create corn that that could survive at a higher temperature. I mean, that's a good thing in the face of danger. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, if vaccines didn't have so much shite in them and, and like and and actually helped the person, you know what I mean? Then. It would be a good thing. I in the tell right you hands. what, Robert. We, we got rid of polio. We got yeah. rid of some really nasty bugs out there, you know. And yet, it's it's no longer the focus. Eh? Yeah. The focus is like people making money. The pharmaceutical companies making money off these doctors who are compartmentalized to the point of stupidity. Well, I think I think um, something I said on my very very first show, and that's that was years ago. Um, I, I still hold true today. If the new world order were caring, peacemaking, loving, wonderful people, I'd be waving flags and saying, let's have that new world order. That's right. That's right. But as they're not. <laughs> yeah. And actually, that's very fair to say, Sean, because like, I, I always had that little bit of hope to say, well, you know, like I hear someone go, oh, well, vaccines are bad. Vaccines are bad. I said, well, vaccines could be good. I always yeah. play the devil's advocate when yeah. I hear someone make a claim like that. And even though I agree with them wholeheartedly in this particular case, in this dimension anyway, <laughs> you know, it's incredible. So I, I used to say to like um, people used to say, I, I, I'm a big soccer fan and I, I, I was a good player when I was younger. So that's why I was a soccer fan. And I remember going to matches uh, back in the 70s and we're talking violence on the terraces was rife in England. OK, I grew up in England and um I used to meet other people who didn't ever go to the matches and they just uh, and as soon as I say I was a football fan oh you're a thug do you see <laughs> they would yeah. automatically and yet out of 70,000 people in a in a football match you know there was probably you know 200 who were there for the fight who were there for the aggro who were there for the trouble yeah. and yes sometimes because of the aggro spreading like a disease it may it might have got to a couple of thousand at the most but we're talking yeah. in back then in the 70s 50 60 70,000 people went to a match yeah and you know i wouldn't be surprised now this is a conspiracy theorist in me coming out here for a minute i wouldn't be at all surprised if some of the <clears throat> like mob mentality mk ultra experimentations were being done at a lot of these large events with well, with, with large amounts of people I would, I'd be certain to say that it probably was. Well, back then, I'm telling you, it was quite incredible. I mean, I remember Prince going uh, live on air saying that th- th- there'd be a couple of Chinook helicopters or a, or, or a jet going <coughs> past his area in, in, in the Bronx or something and um, two hour- spraying. And then in two hours, three hours' time, there were um, familial f- fights and... Uh, people out on the street kicking each other's heads in and and, and stuff, yeah right and, and it sent them all wild and he genuinely believed um now i'm not I, i'm paraphrasing but he genuinely believed that it was the government uh testing agro uh, drugs on these people yeah i and you know now we're seeing it all the time well I, I i don't know if it's drugs per se now but you know you got all these you got these like social justice warriors you got these other groups like antifa blm um, and it's out of hand. I mean, but now what they're doing is they're taking the kids in universities yeah. who, are, who are already desensitized youth, plug, you know, plugged into their own little personal matrixes, you know, and they're basically, they're, they're, they're 
they're giving them pamphlets and teaching them this stuff and, and, and basically turning them into these little social justice warriors. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, the feminist movement is quite scary in there. And yes, it is. Absolutely. And that's right up in there, too. Um, I, I, I couldn't believe it. When I got back to Canada, I, uh, I thought I'd get myself a, a six-pack of old Milwaukee. Now, before I left Canada... They used to have a nice, pretty-looking lady on the can, one of four different ones, okay? <laughs> yeah. And, like, nice color, classy shots, kind of done in the uh, 50s or 60s kind of art style. And uh, I come back. It's a monochrome can with the tiny little one-inch outline of one of those ladies, like, on the back label. I'm like, what did the feminist do to my beer this time? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was really upset, you know? Yeah. I was like, really? Did, did this just happen? I, I hope they were saving money on the color print, I guess. I don't know, but... Well, that's on the know. beer, okay. But, I mean, when they're talking to 12- and 13-year-old girls and boys and telling them that they might not be the right sex... Oh, gosh, yeah, that's... This is horrible because they shouldn't even be think. Okay, first no, they off, shouldn't. they shouldn't. G- gender specific, uh, gender, uh, gender, uh, gender specific uh, specificity is basically something that comes up when you start thinking about who you want to have sex with. Like that's where it that's becomes. Where it starts. A, that's that's where it becomes a thing, mm-hmm. and like. I don't think any kids under the under that age in that age group at all have anything. They, sh- they shouldn't be thinking about the, that that kind of stuff at all, let alone, you know. No, it's as, absolutely scary, and and uh, yeah. um, the amount of genders there are now. Now, is that because there's so much estrogen being pumped into the water that people's hormones are all over the fucking shop? Is it, oh, is, it, yeah. is, is it because is it is, is it another is it another reason? Um, of dumbing people down so that they can't argue or be macho or be manly or be womanly. Um, You know, and I mean that both sides. Um, uh, Honestly, yes, we had stereotypes in the old days that might have been wrong. Um, You know, the the woman with the long cigar, (laughs) sorry, the cigarette stalk and 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 smoking a cigarette. We know they were pushing cigarettes through Hollywood, et cetera, et cetera, with all the people smoking and all the rest of it. Mm -hmm. But men were sent to war. <clears throat> women weren't they stayed at home then that changed then i suppose what i'm trying to say is i never i don't understand why women fancy men let alone how men fancy men yeah right, right so i don't <laughs> yes yeah, so i don't understand that side of it so that's me out of the equation i i've got i've got really i should shut the feck up because i've got no comment to make on it but what i ha- <laughs> but what i have got to make on it is i have a 14 year old daughter she has friends who, you know, <clears throat> one, I, I won't say her name, but I'll make up names. She she was called Shirley, and now she wants to be called Tom. Right. You know, this is happening to 12, 11, 10-year-olds. Yeah. How the a heck? Bud, a buddy of mine I used to work with, he was, uh, he was large. He wasn't, like, heavy set, but he was, you know, he had a larger frame. And uh, he was all guy. Anyway, a friend of mine uh, said, yeah, here's, uh, here's so-and-so today. It said, it prefers to be called Shirley. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, what? Anyway, yeah, no, it's bizarre. It is happening across the board. And I, I think it's, I think it's uh, due to a lot of different things, actually, Sean. Um, I think it's an orchestrated event covering all angles. Well, it's a depopulation um, pro- program. If you don't want people to have children, make them gay. That's, that's 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 probably the biggest part of it, and um, I mean the delivery mechanisms are 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 crazy. First off, let's look at things like uh, YouTube. Uh, in specific, actually, yeah, let's yeah. look at YouTube first and foremost here. Um, if you go to the trend, trending or whatever they call it there, you go to the trending channels and trending videos on YouTube, 90% of them are all going to be about transgender or SJW, BLM, all of these, all these other groups like, that are either George Soros invested in the first place or, or, or you know, social programming. And people that are pointing it out to other people are yeah. getting like no views like the, they're getting put to the bottom of the list mm. all the time they're not getting uh you know put on uh, the suggested viewing list at all um and this social so- propaganda robert it started years ago i mean Absolutely. <clears throat> i mean children's tv shows 
where the man who was a man would be an idiot. Yeah. Right? The man who was part of the show was a very nice man. Mm-hmm. Okay? And was, hello, boys and girls. Okay, I'm sorry, but that is how it was. I remember watching it thinking, I don't want to be like him. Yeah, <laughs> okay? Yeah. You know, I, <laughs> that's my own programming, I suppose. But Yeah, there's, there's years, been a lot years, of kids' shows years like that. Later, years later, and because of it, I honestly think that is why there is mass global suicides in the teenage to 20s males. They do yeah. not know who they are. They aren't as, as 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 kosher as they used to be. They haven't got a platform that they used to have. Yeah, there's a there was a TV show that just came out on Netflix. I'm just gonna look this up here. Uh, TV shows, TV show, suicide. Anyway, the entire show. I think it's called like Thirteen Reasons or something here. Okay. But um, yeah, it's called Thirteen Reasons. Yeah. Anyway, it's it's horrible, and I'll tell you why. Because this girl kills herself in the show, and then the whole season is about how her death is affecting the other friends because she sends them on a wild goose chase for information, kind of like an information scavenger hunt. Okay. Um, and and it's it's it really really glorifies the the suicide bit. Even shows how she did it near the end of. It. Of course, spoiler alert. <laughs> I don't have a problem spoiling crappy shows, okay? <laughs> That's grand. That's grand. You go fire ahead. And, and listen, from so, what, what I've just said, I probably won't be listening to next week anyway, so you've got no problem there. Yeah. Well, yeah, but it's horrible. I mean, like, and, like, you got kids watching it, but I'm, I'm wondering if they're watching it from the same vantage point that I'm watching it. Right. Like, you know, I'm looking at, the show in horror i'm looking at the show in a state of like holy crap like what who would write this and who would put this out like this you know what i mean like this this is something for a book in the young adult category in the far back of the shelf you know what i mean like yeah this isn't kind of this isn't this isn't something that that should be marathoned on netflix in my opinion anyway but um yeah it's, it's almost like they desensitize people to the subject somewhat glorify it and um they dramatize it they explain it out and it's kind of like normalization and it's like not normal to want to hurt yourself it's not at all like it's it's very sad and 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 to see that it is you know ourselves men we're constantly being told off now for speaking our minds yes absolutely well not only that um they've made it illegal to hate things now (laughs) <laughs> and i hate that <laughs> <laughs> i hate that too um it's okay to it's like let's go back to that i love women i think you know do they not want to be loved i don't know if they even know well <laughs> it's arguable but i don't know if they even know what love really is anymore because they've blurred the lines between the family unit between the husband and a wife yeah you know yeah. that dynamic when the lines get blurred so much, it just doesn't matter anymore. And I think it was it was it Russo years ago who was talking to one of the um, one of the Rockefellers who actually said that the, the, the they had they had planned to put women in work for no other reason than to tax them. Yeah, yeah. Do you know they wanted to split up the family completely, and now they're taking our children at three years old to school. Yeah. And uh, they're schooling them in a way that we would never dream of wanting our children to be schooled. Yeah, um, absolutely. Well, it's it's it goes back to state sponsorship once again and state control. I mean, they they've already you know they've got most people by the short and curlies you know um, with with work worrying about your job. So now you know you got two two people. If you do, if you are lucky enough to have a two uh, parent household, they're probably both working. You know what I mean? Yeah. And. It, it, they've, they've, they, like it goes back to them losing the lines between the roles, and I mean, it's it's just it it just all falls apart. I don't think uh, I don't think children today value, um, you know, like I mean, when you and I were kids, Sean. I mean, a girl, what she wanted, she was a princess, and she wanted to, you know, to meet Prince Charming. You know what I mean? That yeah, that was always yeah. the 
the dynamic going on in the backs of their... Well, for most. And listen, the, there were gay yeah. people back then, and Absolutely. we knew of them as being a little bit different, and we loved them just as much. Yeah, when they're skipping rope with the girls in grade four, yeah. you knew they were a little bit different. And yeah. That, <laughs> yeah. that was the case. No, but, I mean, and there's always, and like, there's always that element. And I, I think what it's, what, what it's turned into is, um, I, I, again, like I said, I think it's about, I think it's about state control. They're going to, they're going to want to have every single person in an ambiguous state, um, on some kind of minimum income support and, and basically consuming. Yes. And that's it. Yeah. <laughs> And that, I think I think that's setting the bar pretty low for mankind. However, well, well you know, we've got we've got a situation here in Ireland where we've been fluoridated for the last fifty years. Yeah, and we're talking high quality toxic waste from the Chinese and uh, Dutch and Spanish aluminium industry and fertilizer industry. And that's right. Being lied to and told that it's good for our our our, um, our teeth, and now fifty years later. You know, it takes in, with the same amount of fluoride in a rat because they've tested it. After a five year period, the rats are infertile. Yeah. Is that what they're doing to us? Are they sterilizing by stealth, pretending it's good for our teeth while dumb us, dumbing us down enough to never revolt against what they're doing to us? I do think that's a pretty fair shake at the at, at the subject because, uh, you know, I did I've done a lot of research on this as well, Sean, as you might know. And um, they, I mean, when when the Lancet Journal comes out, which is basically like one of the big uh, cancer, you know, uh, magazines, basically uh, that's what all the doctors read, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, they announced in the Lancet that sodium fluoride is one <clears throat> is one of the new of the six um, neurological. Uh, toxins like it's 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 a poison it's it's yep. and with that information being released in a public journal i have no idea how the government can still still get this crap put in the drinking we supply. should be it arresting sure. we should be arresting them at, hus uh, at customs and excise we should be stopping it from coming into our country for a start Instead, it's being mm -hmm. delivered by a, a firm called Chemiflock, signed in by the by, by the government, signed in by our Taoiseach, and then it's dumped into our water systems to basically, sorry, slow kill us. I think so. I think so. I think it does a lot of damage, and it damages different systems, for one. Um, yeah. So, if, first off, anybody who does even 10 minutes of research will find out that sodium fluoride does not have any effect on your teeth other than a detrimental one, to be yeah, honest with you. It creates dental fluorosis. Yes, it does. And calcium fluoride, which occurs naturally in, in, in lake and mountain and spring water, um, actually does repair teeth. So first off, they got the wrong type of fluoride. It's the calcium fluoride, which is the right stuff. Yep. So who, who's going out of their way buying up calcium fluoride and putting it in a supply? Because they're not. Someone's getting rid of their waste and someone else is making money. This is what's happening. Exactly, exactly. I mean, look, it costs an awful lot of money for those industries in China and Spain, etc., to get rid of their toxic waste. Instead, they're selling it and we're buying it with our taxpayers' money to poison ourselves. Yep, that's right. <laughs> I, yeah, think, I think Canada, I think I stressed Canada, that enough. <laughs> Canada's guilty as well. I mean, um, my hometown of Hamilton. I just made a phone call. Uh, I, I was curious because um, in Kelowna, and where I was up in Oyama in British Columbia, they 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 don't fluoridate the waters in some of those spots, which is really cool. And I yeah. I, I found that quite nice. I lived there five years, so I, you know I didn't it wasn't in my mind. But when I got back to Ontario to Hamilton. I was like, shit, they fluoridate the water here. So I just wanted to make a call, and I wanted to find out if they could tell me where they're getting their sodium fluoride from. Just, you know, and they, they passed me around through a few different, uh, you know, uh, inboxes here, there, what have you. And then they sent me to the website. They say, oh, it's on the website. But I said, it doesn't say what the company is. I go, oh, well, won't. so basically I had to escalate my order and then send me to something. It was just a big runaround. There was, I would never have spoken to a single person by the end of this. I would have had to go and do it by some other means of research, right? But not by talking to them. Yeah. 
No, it's in, it's incredible, and uh, it's one of the my big. Do you remember I told you about my first ever show? My first yeah. ever show also covered um, fluoridation, and it was with That's Walter right. Graham. And I really do think that I'm still fighting a losing battle here. But uh, how many pe- hey, any Irish people out there want to get together and start arresting people? Let's go down to the docks and film these people bringing it in in the chemiflock trucks. Let's actually make some arrests. I'm into it. Yeah, if I was in Ireland, I'd be there, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's incredible. But, it really is. I mean, I think everybody should. I mean, I was looking at um, I was looking at places in Ontario where they um, stopped fluoridating. Like they actually had um, they had a vote in Guelph, which is uh, about forty five minutes or forty minutes away from where I am right now. This place called Guelph, and they they voted down the use of, of fluoride in their drinking water. Mind you, out here we have a lot more. There's a lot more Mennonite um, communities out here as well. Like in uh, out near Listowel and out near um, St. Jacobs and, and what have you, but uh, yeah, no, like it, it's something that we can do. Like, and I think it's one of the biggest uh, bricks in the wall, if you would. Um, I think I think it's one of the biggest parts of, of their plan, and that's the fluoridation aspect. Absolutely, um, I think that's global, isn't it? And uh, the ones that are getting out of the water, they're actually noticing within six months a change. Yeah. Well, it's definitely within the Commonwealth. Yeah. Well, it's a British it, thing, then, is it? It's it, it's 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 right across. Uh, yeah, it's right across the five eyes. And for those who don't know what the five eyes are, I'm referring to um, the UK, Canada, United States, Australia, and New Zealand. Yeah. And some would argue that Israel is turning into the sixth eye, but we'll we'll have to uh, keep our ear to the ground on that one. Well, they're certainly being funded by one of the eyes, anyway. That's right. <laughs> well, you know what they say, the eyes have it. Indeed, indeed. Oh, gosh. They were saying infamy, infamy. They've all got an infamy. <laughs> <laughs> infamy, I like that one. You're going to have to use it. <laughs> it's an oldie, it's an oldie from an old Carry On film. So, look, we have got, um, I suppose, about 35, 40 minutes left to uh, continue talking, as they say. And I'm just wondering, are there any subjects that, like, I've been bringing out the subject matter a lot. Um, is there anything that you'd but- like to touch that we haven't? Um, let's see what well, well, we've covered. Uh, well, actually, you know what? We kind of started getting into all of these groups like the uh, BLM and all this other stuff. I, I think I think it's the same uh, mechanism that's 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 causing uh, all, all this uh, LGBT and, 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 and other uh, other things like this social programming, I guess I could call it. Um, I think it's all part of the same network i think the delivery system is the same uh okay we we can thank darpa we can thank the arpanet aka the internet yeah the in, i think we the intranet it used to be called didn't it no it was actually called arpanet um, oh, okay. an intranet is the inside of a remote network oh, okay gotcha but um yeah it's it's kind of uh it's, and I, I guess one could say that the internet started off as an intranet because it was a, it was a it was a closed it was a closed loop it was a closed system when they first started to develop it. Yes, was it purely so, military? It was absolutely purely military. Um, the the office that was in charge of the development and 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 design was called the Information and Processing Techniques Office, and that was I believe it was ran by Joseph Licklider and a few other big names in the internet world there. Um, this was in 1967, as I said. But guess what? In 1966, the IPTO, the Information Processing Techniques Office, was known as Command and Control Systems. Okay. And being run by, by the military. And, yeah, um, they created what, uh, a company that was... I think it was called BBN Technologies. I've got it. I've got it in my research notes here somewhere. But anyway, yeah, BBN Tech was basically um, run alongside with Raytheon and all these other groups. But guess what? Raytheon went and reacquired BBN Technologies in 2008. So after they basically spent about oh I don't know. 30, 30 years of research and development, handing it out to the private sector and the public sectors to basically do all this um, uh, development work, you know, building the programs, getting the user base, getting 
uh, everything rolled out as you would. Um, even CERN had a hand in this in 1987, creating the TCP IP protocol for domain name resolution. Nice. And this was CERN, yes, 666. Um, and this is this is a uh, this is a, this piece of information is actually out of DJ's bag from Level Nine News. Okay. What she discovered when she looked up um, the whole thing with CERN and the www is that in ancient Aramaic, the W is the sixth letter. So, so everywhere so that you see it, six six six. Basically, yeah. yeah. And six 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 also appears in the CERN logo. And now they're they're smashing subatomic particles together at near light speeds to create portals and some weird shit. I mean, I, I just wouldn't put it past them. <laughs> oh, of course. There's, there's too many bits and pieces that point to yes here. Uh, anyway, but uh, I digress. The uh, whole the whole bit about um, the internet being designed for military purposes um, can basically be seen by the. Like I said, the reacquisition of BBN technologies. They're the ones who originally were given the responsibility of, of developing and then I guess you could say dissecting and handing out different bits of the technology to be worked on by different companies that ultimately spread out into what it, what it was over, I would say, between 1999 up to about 2008. And it went back to Raytheon, who's still the biggest subsidiary of, uh, well, maybe not the, the, the biggest, but w one of the largest subsidiaries of, of the whole DARPA, um, you know, uh, project. Uh, um, I, I guess you could say, uh, sorry, I got sidetracked there. Yeah, no uh, Raytheon basically having BBN Technologies back in their hands, it's like the thing came full circle back into the hands of the creators, if you would. Right. So, but anyway... Um, it it is clearly stated. I don't know if it still is, but it was last year and the year before that when I last checked. But on the Raytheon's uh, um, project schedules, like they they show you what technologies they've been charged with developing uh, by way of DARPA. DARPA also has a lot of stuff on their website, and I mean a, a lot of this um, um, emerging into like individualized. Uh, you know, services and what have you is all about having 100% situational awareness of every organism on the planet in real time. Now, how do you manage that? Hmm. The only way you can manage that information is not with more people. You're not creating jobs here. This is where the AI comes in. Okay. You understand what I'm saying? I and do, then I when do. you got, you throw in quantum computing and, you know, the ability to, 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 to have instantaneous results emerge from an alternate or parallel universe. Like they don't even know how it works. They just know that it does. Like, well, they, they, they just are insane anyway, aren't they? These, these, these psychopaths, these scientists over the years, I mean, you know, they, they would have, <laughs> they would have let Reagan and Margaret Thatcher press the red button if they wanted to. Yeah. True story. Um, yeah. I mean, <sighs> I think it, it, it's all it's all smoke and mirrors at the end of the day, Sean. I mean, we both know that. Um, and like, while while we're kind of trying to figure this out over here on this side, you know, they're over there on the other side, you know, yeah. changing up for the next trick, right? And so, it's it's definitely a lot of moving parts to this. And you know, I do believe though that the internet was the biggest component of how quickly things fell apart. I mean, it only took. It only took from like the mid '90s to where we are right now today, and I'm not saying that it's worse off than it's ever been because you know we've had we've had a couple world wars already, but these things are repeating themselves in cycles. We're going through yeah. the same um, kind of reprogramming that the German Ger that the Germans went through just prior to World War II. Like yeah. the, the same kind of division tactics are being happened. Like the thing with George Soros um, funding these other groups is just a repeat of same shit, different day. I mean, this stuff, it had already happened. I mean, they had TV, what was it, 30s, 40s onwards, 50s onwards, and that, you know, molded people's minds. Before that, the radio was massive. Oh, it was absolutely... absolutely. P people think, you know, oh, the radio was old hat. Well, the, the radio was telling people exactly what to think. Um, and that was what the, the TV then did. And now we've got the internet. And they want us to be divided. They want us to be as divided as possible. They want us to be lonely, is what yes. they want. 
They want individuals within their families to be lonely. Yeah, I agree 100%. And, well, they, they want you to be alone. Yes. Like you said, I, I think to be lonely would mean that you would um, actually strive for some sort of companionship. But they want people to be alone and cynical and um, very, uh, I guess you could say, little shits, really. Because, yeah, I mean, people, yeah. like, think... They just, you know, they think they deserve, like, they're entitled to this, they're entitled to that. In Ireland, and I and I hope that people, you know, can agree with me on this one, and just to be honest, there's so much begrudgery. Mm. A- anyone who does well, from from who has little, works hard and does well, it really is a who the fuck do they think they are type of thing. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, like I was saying, with the, with the youngsters nowadays, I mean, they're coming out, they're not teaching them any history. No. They're not teaching uh, the kids how we got to where we are today. No. What they're doing is they're saying, if anybody comes up to you and says something that you dislike, you have you know the ability to shut that down. Well, that's that's kind of that's a mixed bag there, in my opinion, because <laughs> they want they want us all to be offended. They want everyone to be offended. That's right, you know. And then, and then, what do they do? They go around and legislate some laws that say that offending people is actually illegal. So now they have a, a virtue to fight for. You know what I mean? Like this, this yeah. virtue, this virtue of seating, I guess you could call it. it. It's, it's disgusting because then, you know, us old-fashioned types, we got not, we only have a leg to stand on, even if we do try to have a point. You know, even our sense of humor isn't accepted. That's right. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, we're screwed if we do, we're screwed if we don't, Sean. <laughs> well, I think we should carry on doing. That's right. I do. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I can't change now. <laughs> <laughs> Look, there are th- I've changed over the years. I'm, you know, when I was... Well, four- we, we grow, Sean. We grow. Yeah. I, I didn't change. You are who you are, I think. Actually, I'm you're s- right. You're right. I've been me all my life. And uh, just things that were acceptable back then aren't acceptable now. That's right. Yeah, um, I, I wanted to use a term "evolve," but I don't want to get the evolutionists pissed off. So I'll forget that. <laughs> Sodom. <laughs> uh, well, well said. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, man. Um, anyone who gets then... anyone who gets offended by the, the the talk of someone else has needs a talking to. Yeah. Well, I think the biggest part of this is, like I said, the social engineering with the Internet and and jumping back to a a much more aloof topic would be the Flat Earth Society. I mean, these Flat Earthers is a prime example of how to waste somebody's time talking about gibberish. Yeah. You know, you know, you, you get somebody who just doesn't know the actual facts about how something works and then. You give them piles and piles of misinformation on the internet to root through as they cherry pick away. And, and, then and, link, and link it to a religion if one can. Oh, gosh. I've, I've, I sat there. I pissed myself dying of laughter the one day. I'm watching two flat earthers fight over whose model was right. Says, you're a shill because your, your model sucks. No, you're a shill because your flat earth model sucks. It was like, <laughs> I, I, just, I was dying. I was killing myself. Ah, oh, bless them all. Bless them all is what I say. Right. And the ones that get offended, <laughs> Sodom. That's right. So, look, Out of the Bag is, is really honoured. We've got half an hour, and I know that you've can uh, you you've got subjects, as you said, that you're going to take into your new show, um, the Save the Silly Humans show. And we've already proven that we are silly humans during this one. But is there Absolutely. Any, is, yeah. Is there anything that you want to um, go for, for the for the last half hour? Well, let me see here. We we covered quite a quite a range. We just kind of dabbled in bits and pieces. We went all I'm, over the place, Robert, didn't we? Yeah, pretty much. But we kind of hopped around with interesting segues. Um, well, I'm still kind of on this kick about the social engineering stuff because it's um, well, it's it's necessary to, for people to yeah, know about it. Because, like, okay, we where where the, where the flat Earth, you know, stops being funny. It's where when you got like crowds and crowds of people wasting each other's time, no one's actually discussing proper solutions. No. And I mean, if I if I didn't know any better, I know PIR is all about creating solutions, and the ARPANET is not. <laughs> no. um, it really is creating like uh, a sub. I don't want to say subspecies because that sounds condescending, but uh, let's just call it like a subgroup 
uh, of of society, which A is misinformed, B has malintent because they're entitled little so and sos, and 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 C, they're basically been given given like kind of like a virtue to 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 base their entire mission on. So you got these groups, and it's creating like so much division. Like you got. If you go back a little bit, look back at Ferguson, what happened there, that was definitely instigated by, you know, uh, agent provocateurs and what have you. And you had pretty much almost every group you could imagine down there um, trying to incite some kind of, 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 you know, conflict. But the real cherry on the pie, I found, was basically uh, what just happened recently with um, the... uh, it was the uh, the thing about the statue with the uh, pulling the, down the statues. Yeah. Oh, with the Civil War, um, not the Civil War, the uh, revolutionaries there. Okay. Yeah, they were basically there like, on a on a on a well uh, scheduled uh, permitted event to discuss, you know, to to basically protest, you know, taking down a statue, and of course, you know. They got flagged as white supremacists, you know, and oh yeah, they're, they're the Confederates. Confederates. Yeah, that's what yeah. it was. I was trying to look at the right word. I'm not American, so apologize. I do, <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah. So you got the Confederates there, and 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 they're talking about the statue and this and that. Well, they never even got to talk about the statue because violence erupted immediately with Antifa and and BLM. I mean, someone says white supremacists, Antifa goes what, and then you know, it's it, everything falls apart, and. They never even got to have their protest. But what irks me the most about that entire event is that the police were given a stand down order and told not to um, not to not not to stop any fights to take not place. Not to interfere. Not to interfere at all. And where do these where do these orders come from? And this this is what people have to start looking at. Like not necessarily what has happened but who allowed things to happen and i think i think what we've like as 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 a group of people uh, i think what we've kind of lost touch with is again it goes right back to information information is power people don't want to research people do just they don't want to do any of the you know heavy lifting in the understanding department basically you know like they just want their news spoon fed to them you know watch their cnn it's it's incredible that you mentioned about the YouTubes, you know, the, like the children and all the rest of it watching YouTubes. There are there are people who won't talk to other people if they don't follow a certain YouTuber. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I yeah. mean, it is and, just incredible. And well, going back to that YouTube bit, there, all these channels that are like, you know, some of them, especially you got, especially young people. Um, let's say coming out of the closet like you know oh i'm 12 i'm coming out you know what i mean yeah but these videos have a high production value some of them have motion graphics well edited and and with music i mean who is doing who is producing this material it's i highly doubt the kids rocking uh um you know uh some graphics uh package or you know what i mean like or adobe after effects or premiere for that matter well maybe one or two you know but maybe one or two out there sure but i mean just and then then they're also networked they're also part of these uh, like i joined the network early on with my channel i got the hell off it immediately because i was starting to get pitched all these like oh you can get more clicks you can get more views you can get this which i find cheap i'd rather do the heavy lifting and do the work myself yeah or or not do it you know what i mean Mm -hmm. so i wasn't going to be part of one of these networks after i saw what it was and like all all the all the promotional bits coming out and then oh yeah uh, you know you can promote products and then get this and i was like okay i'm not playing this game screw that but a lot of these other YouTube channels are getting this kind of a treatment and they're being pushed. They're totally being pushed, in my opinion. I yeah. mean, like, yeah, but just you so know, many- I've, I've got a daughter, for example, who, who, who won't go on a YouTube unless they've got, you know, a couple of hundred thousand or a million viewers that they must be good if they've got that. And I'm thinking, yeah, what about the new ones? What about the, you know? Yeah. And there's definitely a lot of that too. And, you know, I kind of I kind of gravitate more towards the smaller channels now 
just because the exact opposite like reasoning <laughs> yeah is, is that why i stayed so small <laughs> yeah right <laughs> But, I don't know. Uh, I just think when I just think when you go on the YouTube channel itself, the, the actual page, and it has suggested videos, uh, have a quick glance at them. I, mean, I don't open any of them because I'm obviously going on YouTube to look for what I want to look for, or else I wouldn't be going yeah. on YouTube, right? Yeah. But then I'm I, going there right now. I'm going to go there right now and just see what I see. Ah, here. you me... know, it's going to show you uh, suggested, and then it's going to show you a couple that maybe you've already looked at. Yeah. Well, you've got my channel, trending, and subscriptions. So let's see what's trending. Yeah. Oh, and they wouldn't change the YouTube interface as well. And they just do this, and they automatically, they automatically enroll you into whatever new thing they do. Eh? You always have the option to go back to the old one. Oh, of course, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so very first thing on trending. Okay. I was actually surprised here. Getting into a conversation in a language you don't actually speak that well. Okay. Next one. Transgender Q&A with my boyfriend. There you go. That's what they're pushing. Yeah. And then let's see here. Lifestyle. The next one. $15 haircut versus 500 haircut. Okay. Trivia. Pure, yeah. pure trivia. I mean, seriously, probably this conversation that we've had that has covered an awful lot of subjects over the two hours, you know... I hope people listen to it, but when you think about it, we don't quite cut the mustard with um, a gay guy playing the piano with his cat. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do you know, we just yeah, don't. I'm, yeah. See, when, when okay, yeah, when a transgender Q and A with my boyfriend beats out Hurricane Irma. Yeah. And you know what I mean, and Miami being hit by Irma, and I mean, yeah, it's it tells you something. It does. It tells, it does. It tells you where people's priorities lie. It tells you where I think, honestly, dude. I think that the uh, the whole. I don't know how many people actually work at Google, <laughs> right? But um, a lot of this is done by algorithms. Um, I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah, a lot of this is is, is pre selected by algorithm for its content. I mean. When you upload a video now to YouTube, it scans your content. It compares it to the bloody universe of information that's out there on the internet for for copyright and and then you know it'll it'll rate your video and demonetize it if it doesn't if, you know if it's not uh i guess you could say uh advertiser friendly that's how they put it if it's not advertiser friendly it gets demonetized okay. so you know all these truth channels obviously a lot of them are getting demonetized or getting strikes yeah. um well, look, it's, diff- it's difficult, and, and, and I guess on Healing Oracle Radio and People's Internet Radio, we, we, we want to get the word out. We're, as you say, we're seeking solutions. We're looking at um, the ins and outs of things. We're making our own decisions. I mean, honestly, I know that six years ago there was a very, very buoyant anti-fluoride campaign. Um, yep. I don't know where those people have gone. Yeah. I, I've, I haven't got a clue where they've gone um, because it stopped. Um, mm-hmm. no one's fighting it anymore and everyone's more interested in the next YouTuber. Yeah. Well, the, well you what's, know, or what's on Netflix? Like, exactly. I was just going to say that. Like, it, it, it's, it's all this mass consumption of content now. And it goes back to what I said a little bit earlier about there being just so many, many resources for misinformation that you could virtually be on the internet all day and not come across one single actual valid fact. I mean... Yeah. There's just so much crap out there now, and it's just all consumption, consumption, consumption. People are just consuming, you know. People want to giggle, and, you know, if it, if it means, you know, watching a sloth go across a, a a bar, and that takes an hour on a YouTube, then, hey, that's much better than listening to someone talking sense. That's right, yeah, yeah. And it's, it's and all it's about, cu- and yeah. And it's cute. And it's cute, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, well... You know, like I was saying, it's it's it it's all depends on in whose hands is it. And when I start to see the signs point towards uh, a motivation leaning towards evil, it starts to it starts to it, it lends credence to the idea that I think there's uh, definitely hands in at, sorry hands at play here that have uh, you know ill intention basically. Yeah. Um, yeah. And 
look, it, it's all the big players. It's the controlling. It's it's it's, it's sorry. It's the controllers. I, I like to refer to them as. But um, YouTube is at the top of the list. YouTube, yeah. along with the you know with the Google platform, along with Twitter, along with Facebook. Along, it's all the giants. It it's is, all the it giants is. that are running this stuff. And why is transgender Q and A popping up before? Like, like Hurricane before Irma. Any, I just don't before get it. anything else, to be honest. Yeah. Do you know? I mean, you know, and it's already been stated now, like for the record, that uh, um, if you got Facebook, if you're logged into Facebook, your 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 device is listening to you. Um, same thing with, uh, with the Google AI. I mean, for me, for with, me, I say that, let let them hear, let them listen, let them. Learn. Yeah, exactly. I'm the same way. I mean, yeah. like. I, I, I was watching the TV freak out where I'm staying here, and I didn't realize it at the time, but the Xbox was turned on, and the Xbox was listening to every single thing I was saying, and it was flipping through menus. It was just freaking out. I didn't know what was going on. <laughs> but, I didn't yeah. know that worked. How does that work? Well, it's just it's, uh, just voice recognition, which has really gotten very good. I mean, it, there was a time where you had to train a computer how to, you know, to recognize yeah. your voice. If, <laughs> yeah, recognize your voice and your words and all this and that. You don't even need that anymore. I mean, it's gotten so clever now. So, the Save the City Human show, come on. When's it going to happen? Well, I'm definitely, I'm, I'm definitely hoping for October. I want to go first week of October. And, um, yeah, that, that looks like a good start date. I'm uh, I'm just waiting for my new place that I'll be moving into, and then I can get my little studio set back up again and kind of get rocking on making some material and get some shows done. So Brilliant. I'm definitely looking for a first week start. I just haven't settled on a day yet. Okay, um, and what about the, uh, the 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 width of time that you're going to be um, doing the show? Because eight hours sounds dramatically outrageous. Yeah. I don't think I'm going to have a set time. I think I'm going to have a range between two and four hours. And I think the reason I'm going to go that way is because it might go a little longer. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it might and go a little shorter. It might go a little shorter because it just might be, you know, a, a lack of things to go on about. But I, usually we had never had a problem finding things to yak about. So. <laughs> no, no, no. And, and then um, the, the uh, People's Internet Radio, do you think you'll be coming back on the platform? I look forward to it. Um, I, I do. I will be talking to Vinny hopefully in the near future. There, as soon as I get my studio set back up, I was thinking of uh, of getting a slot back on there again. Brilliant, it's, brilliant. And he yes. he'd like to have a word with you anyway, because I mean, at the moment, he's having to um, stream my show, so he has to be there to open up the stream and all the rest of it. Is there a way of me going live straight away? I think so. We'll have to look at the software. You're using different software than me, so I have to. Uh, yeah. I'm using I remember, I'm using but. Yes, yes, I remember that. Yeah, I I found some uh some setup information for you several months back. I don't know if it helped you at all. Well, I'm set up and um, going yeah. well and you know. It works. It That's worked. Good. It worked. Yeah. Good so, stuff. So look, I mean, I mean no, I I I know we said 2 hours, but we can cut it a bit short if you if you um if you want. Yeah, I'm good. I pretty much, uh, I pretty much gotten everything out of my system. It's been a while since I've been on, guys. I wanted to thank all the listeners at Healing Oracle Radio and at PIR for your patience. I kind of, uh, I got away from doing a whole lot of content creation, just trying to get my uh, life back, uh, back in Canada. <laughs> yeah. But uh, having said that, um, I do plan to do a lot more. Uh, a lot of different things. Shows, I want to get a lot more documentary stuff going on there um, on my YouTube channel. I've also been setting up my Patreon account, which I can't really justify at the moment because I haven't been creating any content. But you can look forward to a Patreon account. So if you guys choose that you want to support me, then uh, I'll be able to do even more. And I'll Can you have tell me control. a little bit about a Patreon account? What is a Patreon account, uh, Robert? Because I've actually been told by a few people that I should get one. Well, with Patreon, what you can do is basically you can microcharge, um, you know, uh, people. You can charge a buck or two bucks a month to people, and it doesn't sound like much. But you know, when when you've got let's say a hundred or two hundred people paying a dollar or two a month, it, it can definitely help out and, and 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 get you creating content on a more full time basis. It's an alternative that has been kind of gravitated towards because YouTube has been censoring a lot of channels. Um, 
the censorship has been like off the chain, like just craziness. Like, you know, like people that are doing like, you know, good stuff, like trying to get the word out about various things. They're just, they're just getting demonetized. It makes it not worth it. And channels that were making enough to just make content have had to go out and get jobs and do other things and are no longer being content creators. So it's a way for YouTube to shut us down. Yeah. Patreon's a way for us to kind of get back out of that. And how you use your Patreon is kind of up to you. Um, there's a variety of different ways that you, can, uh, that you can do things, like you can have exclusive content or you can send your Patreon users T-shirts or whatever whatever the case is. But it's, it's, a, it's a decent way for you to be able to get support from your viewers directly and become an open source content creator. So that's kind of where I'm going to be headed. I just have to make sure that um, I'm creating content on a regular basis, which I have not been so. Yeah, well, I have been, um, you know, plenty of content o- over the ye- years. Um, it's, it sounds like a great idea, but I just, I'm just so non-technical, as you know. Mm-hmm. I understand completely. It's, um, it doesn't take much to set up. I, I would do a little bit of reading there, Sean. And uh, yeah, off the air, I can give you a hand. I can give you a hand, kind of pointing you in the right direction. It's not hard to set up, I'll tell you that. Oh, great, great. Okay, it, just, well- it, t- it takes a little bit of thought and a little bit of sitting down and... and Re- deciding what you want to do, I'm I got to make some promotional videos. I got to do a few things, so I've kind of just left my Patreon account sitting on the back burner right. until I get all my bits and pieces in a row. Okay, so um, at the moment I've got a Weebly account, and um, there's a donate button on there that people, if they're so kind, <clears throat> they could donate to me that way. And uh, also, People's Internet Radio are always um, trying to keep going. It's hard. It's a it's a hard old world out there, as you know. That people get closed down left, right, and centre, and people's internet radio is still here. They're still going, which is fantastic. So they also yeah. have a, a a donate button on their website. So it's important that we get supported. I think. Absolutely, and uh, you can also support Healing Oracle Radio from our website. Uh, on basically, if you go to the main page, actually, I think on all the pages, it's just down the right hand column. You'll find a, a donate button as well, Brilliant. and. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's definitely not easy out there. Uh, you'll get some social justice warrior types out there who will go after you for, for having a donate button. But the, the, the real hard fact is, is none of uh, the, us are these, rich. These are, the same, <laughs> these are the same people who think that you can take a person from another part of the world, put them on an venue, a venue and charge nothing in. You That's know, right. These yeah. are the people that have got no brains. They've got no brains. Let, let them, let them, let them yeah. be... Uh, uh, saboteurs of whatever they want to be but at the moment leave us alone <laughs> exactly exactly Robert J Morris it's always an absolute pleasure talking to you anyway and uh, I'm so so glad to get you one out of the bag finally yes it's been it's been too long man it has been too long so thank you very much and uh, this is a pre-record as I say so it's the 12th of the 9th 2017 and we'll be going out tomorrow night uh, you might even be able to listen to yourself while you're at work Robert Hey, I might be able to, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Robert, thank you so much for coming on Out of the Bag. Uh, thank you, Sean. It's been a pleasure, as always. Thank you. Take these walls and rip them, rip